by exceptionally high tides this weekend. The famous monastic island lies more than half a mile offshore and is connected to the mainland by a very narrow causeway. The high tides are linked with the eclipse, of course, with the moon's alignment adding to the gravitational pull on the sea. Looks very stormy. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does, it does. And uh, there's thousands of people apparently turning up. It's like the eclipse yesterday. Let's hope uh, they have rather more success in what they're wishing for than some people did watching the eclipse. Looks a bit cloudy and grey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the time now is 6.36, so they might have the, uh, the high tides in France. Are they going to have um, any rugby success there? That's the question today, isn't it? Well, if France were to win the Six Nations, they that could. would cause... They could. They could. They're 500 to 1 to do it. That gives you an idea of uh, what their chances are like. Yes, it's worth a pound, you're thinking, back at home, perhaps, yeah. but uh, nobody really wants that to happen. But it's a, what, a, what a day. Oh, Starts at 12... Yeah, <laughs> from the French, of course. Um, what a day it is. All kicks off at 12.30. All of it's on BBC One. England, Ireland and Wales all have a chance of, of winning the Six Nations. I had my Welsh uh, neighbours over last night. Uh, they're not too hopeful of a win. But what was interesting is uh, they were trying to get out of a children's party. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder how many people are trying to get out of parties and doing the DIY today. England, Ireland and Wales, all in with a chance of winning the Six Nations. France can do it, but the odds are long. Uh, England play last at Twickenham. They face the French. Before them, Ireland face Scotland and Wales kick the whole thing off at 12.30. Here's Patrick Geary. And so to the final day. No one unbeaten, everything uncertain. Week five, four contenders, a tale of three cities. Rome will set the mood. In the eternal city, Wales only have limited time. A points difference of just 12 means the on-form Welsh must start the day with a feast of scoring. The master destroyers against Ireland need to create constantly against Italy. Even then, it's going to be about waiting. But you've got to make sure that you win the game first because we go there and we try and do things too quickly and, and you imagine we, we lose the game and then France happened to beat England and Scotland beat uh, Ireland and you know a one point victory would have been enough for the championship. It feels different in the north. Edinburgh hosts two sides down on their luck to varying degrees. Scotland have lost all four. Ireland lost the one that matters. Their Grand Slam hopes left in a heap in Cardiff. What cost them then could cost them again. Ireland have struggled for tries at times, but they're not far behind England. The chance is still there. There's still so much to gain. Um, you know, Ireland have, have never put back-to-back -back, um, Six Nations championships together in the, in the modern era, and, and that's an opportunity for us to do that uh, since it became the Six Nations. By twilight at Twickenham, things will be clearer. France will be out of it if either Wales or Ireland have won. If they still have a chance at kick-off, the great unpredictables could add a final twist. England will know exactly what's needed. The maths will be obvious. They must nail the science behind it. Just how much electricity is required will be clear from the start. We'll wait and see what cards are dealt at 25 past four. Um, I'll probably give the players, well, I will give the players an idea of what they need to achieve. We've got to go with a positive mindset to go, and, um, to go and win the game. The new trophy will be at Twickenham. Maybe this is England's to lose, but there will be real hope in each of the three cities. Patrick Geary, BBC News. And remember, it's all on BBC One. Now, it's all about Martin Guptill and his 237 not out at the Cricket World Cup. And he was dropped on four. West Indies are batting now, but you can't help thinking they're asking themselves, why bother? New Zealand's Martin Guptill breaking all kinds of records in this final quarter-final, making that big score the highest in World Cup history and the second highest score by anyone in a one-day international. New Zealand making 393 for six in the end. West Indies have lost wickets at regular intervals as they try and grapple with that. Dennis Ramdin out for naught. But I can tell you what, Chris Gale was uh, hitting the ball all over the park. No question about his fitness. He had a bad back a couple of days ago, uh, but he was doing all right. But he's just been bowled out for 61. And you have to say, perhaps the West Indies' chances are gone. 132 for five then in the 18th over. Wolves are up to seventh in the championship after a 2-0 win over Derby last night. It means Wolves are on the brink of the playoffs. Derby's hopes of an automatic promotion place have taken a hit. A punch, really. Look at this. Darby and White defending. 
Keeper Lee Grant won't want you to see this, but I'm afraid here it is. And we're going to show it to you again. Yep, flapping. One he won't want to see. All the boss, Steve McLaren, not happy at all. Motherwell did their chances of escaping relegation from the Scottish Premiership. No harm at all with a thumping 4-0 win over fifth place Hamilton last night. Lionel Ainsworth was the star man scoring twice, including this wonderful effort. How do you stop that? We'll see it again. It was so good. Times it perfectly. A bit like Chris Gale at the cricket. OK, Super League for you next. And Hull FC beat Catalan Dragons. And Castleford Tigers beat Salford Red Devils in the Super League last night. Leeds came from behind to beat Wigan and narrowed the gap on the lead of St Helens to two points. The Warriors took an early 8-0 lead, but the Rhinos hit back. The teenager, Ash Handley, on his Leeds debut, scored the pick of his side's five tries as they eventually ran out winners. 26 points to 14. Well, Rory McIlroy is coming into form ahead of next month's first major of the season, the Masters. A cracking second round at Bay Hill means he's in contention at the Arnold Palmer Invitational in Florida. McIlroy's round included five straight birdies. Here's one he set up at the fifth hole. He likes it. He really likes it. Glorious blue skies. You don't really need a putter for that. The wind will blow it in. He's five shots behind the leader, Morgan Hoffman. It's the first time, actually, he's hit a sub-70 round. Uh, this season. Now, one last story for you. It's at the tennis. Rafa Nadal is out of the Masters Series event at Indian Wells, beaten in three sets by Milos Raonic in the quarterfinals. That was a surprise. It means Raonic will play Roger Federer in the next round. Federer here in the very bright red top. Maybe that's why he won. Thomas Burdick couldn't see anything. Anyway, he won easily. 6 4, 6 love. And that's it. Chris, What's going thank you on? very much indeed. There's a lot. Yeah, catch your breath. We'll see you again a bit later. Okay. Cheers. Now, with fresh air and a sea view, you might think that a new campsite in Wales sounds like the ideal place for a leisurely break. Yeah, some people, I have to say, including myself, I'm terrible with heights, might be put off with its rather challenging